The journey up to Formula 1 is a long and arduous one. Reaching the pinnacle of motorsport requires a lot of talent, hard work, determination, luck, and yes, money. These challenges become harder and harder as you ascend up the ranks, and the requirements of each formula can differ and cause you to either flounder or thrive. Tony Liuzzi, for example, is widely regarded as one of the greatest kart racers in motorsport history, but had a distinctly average Formula 1 career. And in the mid-90s, there was a team who had been forced to be reckoned with in the feeder formulas, but completely floundered when they entered the big leagues. This is the story of Pacific Grand Prix. Pacific's debut year in Formula 1 had been an unmitigated disaster. They had qualified for only a handful of races and failed to finish any of them. This was a team that had been used to huge success in the feeder formulas, so they knew something needed to change in 1995. Colin Chapman's famed Lotus team withdrew from Formula 1 at the end of 1994, and in February 1995, Keith Wiggins announced Pacific had made an agreement with Lotus's final team boss David Hunt to rename Pacific Grand Prix to Pacific Team Lotus. No staff, equipment or technical support was transferred over from Lotus, but it was hoped that the association would improve Pacific's reputation. They also replaced their aged Ilmore engines with Ford EDV8s. Their 1995 car, the PR02, was a complete redesign of its predecessor and came with a whole host of new sponsors and the silver livery being replaced with a navy blue. Bertrand Gasho stayed on as the driver, while also continuing to be a majority shareholder in the team, but pay driver Paul Belwondo was replaced with Andrea Montemini. Montemini had entered only one race before, the 1994 Spanish Grand Prix for Simtech, where he served as a replacement for the late Roland Ratzenberger. However, he crashed in qualifying and broke both ankles. He had before this though served as a test driver for Ferrari and Benetton. Oliver Gabin remained as a test driver and also ran a campaign in British Formula 3 with Edenbridge Racing. In 1994, the team were forced to go through pre-qualifying before each race due to being the 27th and 28th entries in a 26-car grid. Lotus had withdrawn, and a new team named 40 had joined in their place. However, LaRousse had also withdrawn at the end of 1994, which brought the grid down to 26 cars and meant Pacific would be guaranteed to start every race. The team travelled to Brazil for the opening round of the season. It was immediately clear that their new car was a significant improvement over the previous one. Gasho qualified an astonishing 18th in Q1, and Montemini was 1.6 seconds slower in 21st. Gasho improved by 7 tenths in Q1 but dropped down to 20th, and Montemini improved by 1.6 seconds but was 8 tenths slower in 22nd. They had however beaten their main rivals of the Simtex of Jos Verstappen and Domenico Schiattarella and the 40s of Roberto Moreno and Pedro Diniz and were sandwiching the footwork of Taki Inoue. The Minardi of Pierluigi Martini did not start the race which moved both drivers up one place. Verstappen behind had a strong start and passed both drivers off the line. The Ligier of Olivier Parnis crashed out at the Senna rest which gave both drivers a place. Gasho then dropped behind Inoue, Montemini and Moreno on lap 1. Gasho repassed Moreno on lap 2. He then repassed Montemini on lap 6. The Sauber of Heinz Harold Frentzen retired on lap 11 which moved both drivers into the top 20. The Tyrol of Ukyo Katayama and the Jordan of Eddie Irvine both retired on lap 16 which gave both drivers two places. Gasho then repassed Inoue. Verstappen and the Jordan of Rubens Barrichello then retired on lap 17 which moved them up to 14th and 16th. The Minardi of Luca Badoa pitted from 7 seconds in front of Gasho on lap 23. Gasho pitted at the same time but was struggling as the car got stuck in 5th gear and was in the pits for over a minute and then pulled over and out of the race on his outlap. This gave Montemini two places. He pitted himself on lap 26 and was also in the pits for over a minute as the fuel rig would not release from the car and rejoined in 16th, still in front of Diniz. The Williams of Damon Hill and the Benetton of Johnny Herbert both retired on lap 31 which moved him up to 14th. The Sauber of Carl Wendlinger pitted for over 3 minutes on lap 38 and Inoue for over 5 minutes on lap 41 with both later retiring which gave him 2 more places. Moreno and Badawa in front then both retired on lap 48 which moved him into the top 10. Montemini pitted again on lap 49 but rejoined in front of Diniz. The footwork of Gianni Morbidelli then retired on lap 63 which gave him another place, and in one race he did more than Pacific had previously done in an entire season by seeing the chequered flag and finishing 9th, 4 laps behind the Ligier for Guri Suzuki in 8th, but still a lap ahead of Diniz in 10th, despite developing a crack in the car's floor partway through the race. Neither Benetton nor Williams were awarded constructors points for the race, which initially gave the team a dizzying 5th in the constructors championship. The next round saw the return of the Argentine Grand Prix after a 14 year absence. Both qualifying sessions were held in the rain. Montemini managed to go 19th in Q1 and Gasho was 2.3 seconds slower in 23rd. 
Montemini didn't set a time in Q2 and dropped down to 22nd. Gasho was unable to improve and so remained 23rd, with both drivers beating Moreno, Deniz and Inoue. Race day was dry. Collisions at Turn 1 involving the Ferrari of Jean de Lacy, the Tyrrell of Mika Salo, Herbert, Barrichello, Badawa, Panis, Katayama and Martini meant the race was red flagged on lap 1. All drivers except Badawa took the restart in the team's spare cars, meaning Montemini and Gasho gained only one place. The race was restarted 20 minutes later. The Sauber of Carl Wendlinger stalled on the second formation lap and started at the back of the grid, and Barrichello started from the pit lane, moving Montemini and Gasho up to 19th and 20th. Wendlinger passed in Nui, Deniz and Moreno off the line and then dived down the inside of Gasho at Turn 1. He hit Gasho and sent him into Montemini which took Wendlinger and Gasho out on the spot. Further up, the McLaren of Mika Hakkinen got a puncture from the front wing of Irvine and retired as well. Montemini carried on, now in 22nd and last, but then pitted to retire on lap 2, and points for Benetton and Williams, an 8th for Tyrrell and a 9th for Simtech dropped the team down to 9th in the Constructors' Championship. Next up was the San Marino Grand Prix. In the wake of Roland Ratzenberger and Ayrton Senna's deaths here at the previous year, chicanes had been added at Tamburello and Villeneuve. Gasho qualified 22nd in Q1 and Montemini was 1.3 seconds slower in 24th. Neither driver improved in Q2, but they had beaten Moreno and Deniz and were sandwiching Schiattarella, with Verstappen up in 17th. Rain came on race day, but only six drivers opted to start on wet tyres. Gasho managed to pass Wendlinger at Tamburello. It was immediately clear that wet tyres were the way to go, as the first six drivers stormed away from the rest of the field. Inoue span on lap 1 and was passed by both drivers. Gasho then passed Panis as well, and Morbidelli pitted, leaving Gasho 18th and Montemini 22nd at the end of lap 1. The Ligier for Guru Suzuki span on lap 2 and pushed Badawa onto the gravel, which gave Gasho two more places, but Montemini span as well and was passed by Moreno and Deniz. Wendlinger and Badawa pitted on lap 3, which gave Montemini two places. Montemini repassed Deniz on lap 4 and Moreno on lap 5. He then span at Variante Alta on lap 6 while being lapped by the Benetton and Michael Schumacher and was passed again by Moreno. Montemini passed him again for good on lap 7, but Parnis also repassed Gasho. Herbert span at Tamburello on lap 8 and was passed by Gasho. The rain then stopped. Schumacher crashed out on lap 11 which gave both drivers a place. Verstappen then retired on lap 15 which gave them another place. Montemini pitted on lap 15 but then pulled over on his outlap as the gearbox seized up. Gasho pitted from 14th on lap 19 and rejoined in 17th. Sala retired on lap 20 and Suzuki then pitted which gave him two places. Katayama retired on lap 24, and Martini pitted which gave him two more places, but Suzuki then passed him. Schiattarella pitted on lap 26 which moved him up to 13th. Barrichello then retired on lap 32 which gave Gasho 12th, but he then also suffered a gearbox failure on lap 37, and an 8th for Jordan dropped the team to 10th in the Constructors' Championship. Next up was the Spanish Grand Prix. Montemini beat Gasho by half a second in Q1 to go 23rd. Both drivers improved by almost two seconds in Q2 but stayed in place, again ahead of Moreno and Deniz. Schiattarella was half a second ahead of Montemini in 22nd and Verstappen was up in 16th. Montemini ended up not starting the race due to gearbox problems. Moreno passed Gasho off the line, but Gasho repassed him at turn 3. He ran in 23rd throughout the first stint. Katayama had a slow stop on lap 15 and rejoined behind Gasho. The McLaren of Nigel Mansell retired on lap 19 and Badawa pitted which gave him two places. Inoue then pitted on lap 21 which gave him 19th. Gasho pitted on lap 23, 11 seconds behind Wendlinger and Schiattarella who also pitted and rejoined in 21st in front of Moreno. Alessi then retired on lap 26 which gave him 22nd. Schiattarella pitted on lap 42 and rejoined behind Gasho. Gasho then pitted again on lap 43 but the fuel filler cap caught fire as he exited his pit box and he pulled over at the pit exit. Next up was the glamour of the Monaco Grand Prix. Montemini went 22nd in Q1, but Gasho didn't set a time as he sheared the left rear brake disc on his outlap which tore the wheel off. In Q2, Montemini then didn't set a time due to a gearbox failure and dropped down to 25th, ahead of Inoue who also didn't after being crashed into by the safety car in practice. Gasho did set a time and beat Deniz, Verstappen and Moreno to go 21st. The Williams of David Coulthard collided with the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger and Alessi at saint Devo, which caused the race to be red flagged. The race returned 20 minutes later. Salo was forced to take the restart from the pit lane and Schiattarella did not restart as his car was damaged by marshals which moved both drivers up two places. Verstappen then suffered a gearbox failure at the start of the second formation lap which moved Montemini up to 22nd. Montemini jumped the start and passed Diniz off the line. Salo then passed him on lap 2 and Gasho on lap 3. Morbidelli pitted on lap 6 which gave both drivers a place. 
Hakkinen and Moreno then retired on laps 9 and 10 which moved them into 18th and 19th. Montemini managed to pass Casho on lap 13. At the same time, he was awarded a 10 second stop go penalty for the jump start, along with 5 other drivers. They all quickly served theirs, but Montemini stayed out. Coulthard retired on lap 17 which gave both drivers a place. Montemini served the penalty on lap 18 and was passed by Gasho. He made his scheduled stop on lap 22 but it was slow and he rejoined in 21st and last. Irvine then retired which gave both drivers a place, but on lap 23 Montemini was disqualified for not taking the penalty within 3 laps of it being issued. Gasho was now in 16th, still ahead of Inoue, Morbidelli and Diniz. He pitted on lap 25 and was passed by Inoue. Katayama and Inoue then retired on laps 27 and 28 which gave him 15th. The Ligier of Martin Brundle and Alacy retired on laps 41 and 42 which moved him up to 13th, but Gasho then retired with a gearbox failure on lap 43. A 7th for Minardi and a 9th for Footwork dropped the team down to 12th in the Constructors' Championship, only ahead of 40. Formula 1 then travelled across the Atlantic for the Canadian Grand Prix. Simtech had now withdrawn from Formula 1 which reduced the field down to 24 cars and left just 40 as Pacific's main rivals. Gasho qualified 20th in Q1 with Montemini only 5 hundredths behind in 21st ahead of Moreno and Diniz. Both drivers improved by a second in Q2 and also beat Inoue who did not set a time. Inoue passed both drivers off the line, but both drivers repassed him at turn 2. Herbert and Hakkinen crashed out at the Le Pongle hairpin and Coulthard crashed out on lap 2 which gave both drivers 3 places. Montemini then pitted to retire on lap 6 with a gearbox failure. Gasho pitted with gearbox problems of his own on lap 9 and was in the pits for a minute and a half and rejoined far behind in 20th and last. He managed to catch and pass to Niz on lap 16. The sad of Jean-Christophe Bouillon retired on lap 20 which gave him a place. He then did a scheduled pit stop on lap 23 and remained in 18th. Diniz retired from behind him on lap 27, leaving him in last and Frentzen also retired moving him up to 17th. He caught and passed Moreno on lap 28, giving him 16th but then the battery died on lap 37. Next up was Gacho's home race, the French Grand Prix. Montemini went 19th in Q1 with Gacho 4 tenths behind in 20th after Badawa and Martini did not set times. They both improved in Q2 but Badawa and Martini both set times which dropped them to 21st and 22nd, once again ahead of Diniz and Moreno. Gacho passed Martini off the line. Inoue and Katayama crashed out at turn 1 which caused Martini to spin and be passed by Montemini. Diniz swerved to avoid them and was hit by Montemini which took Diniz out of the race and forced Montemini to pit for repairs to the rear suspension. Herbert retired on lap 3 which gave both drivers a place. Martini passed Gasho on lap 6. He ran alone in 18th until Martini retired on lap 22 which gave both drivers a place, but Gasho then retired on lap 23 with gearbox problems. Montemini carried on after being in the pits for almost 7 laps. Bouillon retired on lap 49 which moved him up to 17th and he eventually saw the chequered flag for only the second time that year but was 4 laps down on Moreno in 16th and 10 laps down on winner Schumacher and therefore unclassified. Next up was the team's home race, the British Grand Prix. Gasho went 21st in Q1, sandwiched by Diniz and Moreno, while Salo didn't set a time and Montemini also didn't as the car's master brake cylinder failed. Rain then came for Q2. Gasho didn't set a time but stayed 21st as no drivers could improve their times. Montemini did set a time but remained in 24th. On race day, Montemini performed an illegal practice start on the way to the grid for which Pacific were fined $5,000 suspended for three races. Salo passed Gasho off the line. Gasho then passed Badawa at Cops. He passed Diniz at Maggots and Montemini also passed Moreno there, leaving them 20th and 23rd at the end of lap 1. Montemini passed Diniz on lap 2. Irvine spanned at Abbey and was passed by Gasho and then retired on lap 3. Badawa then passed Gasho on lap 4. Diniz and Moreno pitted on laps 6 and 10 which created a large gap to Gasho and Montemini and Diniz then retired on lap 14. Inoue and Brundle retired on lap 17 which gave both drivers two places. Montemini then pitted and remained in 19th. Hakkinen and Berger then retired on lap 21 which gave both drivers two more places. Gasho then pitted and remained in 16th. Montemini then spun off at Abbey on lap 22 and stalled the car. Katayama then retired on lap 23 which gave Gasho another place. The footwork of Max Pappis retired on lap 29 which moved Gasho up to 14th. He pitted for a second time and had a slow stop but still remained ahead of Moreno. Hill and Schumacher crashed out while battling for the lead on lap 46 which gave Gasho two more places. Moreno retired from behind him on lap 48 and he saw the chequered flag for the first time that year to come home in 12th, two laps behind Badder in 10th and a lap behind Barrichello who crashed out on lap 60. After the race, due to the team's lack of money and the lack of performance from the car, Gasho made the decision to step aside to make way for a pay driver, 
and so from the German Grand Prix his seat was taken by Giovanni Lavaggi. Lavaggi was from a noble background and had raced for Porsche in sports cars where he finished second in class at the 1992-24 Hours of Le Mans. Despite being a rookie, he was the oldest driver in the field at 37 years old. Montemini was a disappointing 23rd in Q1, behind Diniz and Moreno, while Lavaggi was 1.2 seconds slower in 24th after breaking the car's floor in practice and having to go back to an old spec one. Montemini had his time deleted in Q2 for completing too many laps after going fast enough for 21st, and Lavaggi was one of only three drivers to not improve their time and was 10 seconds slower than Hill's pole time, meaning both Pacifics were outqualified by both 40s for the first time that year. Diniz stalled when the lights went out and was passed by both drivers. Montemini then passed Moreno at the Nord curve. Pappas and Salo retired on lap 1 and Hill on lap 2 which gave both drivers three places. Diniz pitted from behind Lavaggi on lap 4 and then retired on lap 9. Inoue then retired on lap 10 which gave both drivers a place. Montemini pitted on lap 11 and was passed by Moreno but stayed ahead of Lavaggi who had dropped behind. Martini retired on lap 12 which gave both drivers a place. Moreno then pitted and had a slow stop and was passed by Lavaggi. Alessi and Parnis retired on laps 12 and 13 which moved them up to 15th and 16th. Lavaggi pitted on lap 16 and rejoined behind Moreno. The McLaren of Mark Blundell retired on lap 18 which gave both drivers a place. Moreno pitted again on lap 18 which moved Lavaggi up to 14th. Barrichello retired on lap 21 which gave both drivers another place. Suzuki pitted on lap 26 and rejoined behind Montemini. Moreno retired from behind Lavaggi on lap 28 but Lavaggi retired at the same time with the gearbox failure. Montemini then did his second stop and was now in last. Badawa retired on lap 29, Frentzen on lap 32, Hakkinen on lap 33 and Irvine on lap 42 which meant he finished the season's best 8th, two laps behind Katayama in 7th after losing 1st, 2nd and 3rd gears on lap 33. With this, Pacific overtook the now defunct Simtech in the Constructors Championship. The final race before the summer break was the Hungarian Grand Prix. Montemini qualified 21st in Q1, with Lavaggi 1.9 seconds slower in 24th, sandwiching Diniz and Moreno. Montemini improved by 1.9 seconds in Q2, but Moreno beat him by two hundredths of a second, pushing him down to 22nd. Lavaggi improved by 8 tenths, but was still 1.8 seconds behind Diniz in 23rd, and 9.5 seconds off Hill's pole lap. Diniz passed Montemini on the run to turn 1. Hakkinen retired on lap 4, which gave both drivers a place, Lavaggi stuck with Montemini but spun off into the gravel at turn 4 on lap 6 after the car got stuck in 5th gear. Montemini passed Diniz on lap 7. Moreno retired on lap 9 which moved him into the top 20. Inoue then retired on lap 14 which gave him 19th. Papis pitted on lap 19 and rejoined behind Montemini. Montemini pitted on lap 21 and rejoined back in 19th. Diniz retired from behind him on lap 33, leaving him in last. Papis pitted again on lap 42 and was passed by Montemini. Alessi retired on lap 42 which gave him another place and Papis then retired from behind him on lap 46. Montemini then pitted for a second time. Kasiyama retired on lap 47 which moved him up to 16th. Blundell then retired on lap 55, Salo on lap 59, Brundle on lap 68 and Irvine on lap 71 which meant he finished the race in 12th, four laps behind Winner Hill. Next was the Belgian Grand Prix. During the weekend, bailiffs came to visit Pacific to seize assets as compensation for money the team owed to engine preparation specialist Heine Marder. Heavy rain came in Q1 and Montemini qualified 21st, with Lavaggi a second slower in 23rd, ahead of Herbert who did not set his time. They had got up to 14th and 18th before the track dried out. The rain was lighter in Q2 and Lavaggi improved by almost 23 seconds and beat Moreno, but stayed in 21st as Herbert set a time. Lavaggi improved by 20 seconds but was 4 seconds slower in 23rd, still beating Diniz by 3 seconds. Race day was dry. Diniz passed Lavaggi off the line and Montemini almost passed Papis and Inoue at La Source. Hakkinen retired on lap 2 and Alessi on lap 5 which gave both drivers 2 places. Coulthard then retired on lap 14 which gave them another place. Lavaggi first pitted on lap 18. Montemini then ran out of fuel and pulled over at Stavolo on lap 19 just before he was due to pit. Rain started coming down, so Lavaggi pitted again on lap 19 for wet tyres, but was now far behind Diniz and Moreno. Papis, Irvine, Berger and Badawa retired on laps 21 to 25, which gave him four places. The safety car was brought out on lap 26 due to the weather. Lavaggi pitted again on lap 27 and was in the pit lane for over a minute due to the fuel rig getting stuck, and then also pulled over at Stavolo after the gearbox seized up on lap 28. Next up was Montemini and Lavaggi's home race, the Italian Grand Prix. 
Montemini qualified 20th in Q1, with Lavaggi 8 tenths slower in 23rd, ahead of Papis who did not set a time. Montemini improved by 1.4 seconds in Q2, but Papis did set a time when he dropped to 21st. Lavaggi improved by half a second but was now 1.8 seconds slower in 24th. Paul Sitter Coulthard spun at the Ascari chicane on the formation lap and was wheeled back into the pit lane which gave both drivers a place. Montemini passed Inoue off the line and Lavaggi passed Diniz. Montemini then passed Bouillon at Variante del Retifilo and Lavaggi passed Inoue there. Inoue then hit Diniz and put him into a spin. Montemini then passed the Minardi of Pedro Lamy through Curva Grande. Papis in 14th and Katayama in 16th spun, exiting the Ascari chicane on the dust left there by Coulthard. Montemini then span avoiding this and hit Papis and went into the barriers. Bouillon and Moreno then hit Papis as well. Lavaggi squeezed through and got ahead of Katayama who carried on. The track was blocked so the race was red flagged. The race resumed 25 minutes later. Montemini and Moreno were unable to take the restart as their teams did not have spare cars. Lavaggi had got himself up to 16th but went back to 22nd as the original grid order was taken and Coulthard took his pole position back. Bouillon then started from the pit lane which moved him up to 21st. Lamy had a very slow start and was passed by Lavaggi. Lavaggi then passed Diniz and Dinue at Variante del Retifilo, getting up to 18th on lap 1. Salo spun at Variante del Arroyo on lap 2 and was passed by Lavaggi. Salo recovered to pass Lavaggi on lap 5. Inoue and Bouillon then passed him on lap 6 and he spun at Variante del Retifilo on lap 7 braking to avoid Bouillon and stalled the car. After the Italian Grand Prix, Lavaggi's sponsors stopped paying and so he was replaced with Jean-Denis de la Traz. De la Traz had experience in Formula 3000 and French touring cars and in 1995 had finished 4th in the GT1 class in the 24 hours of Le Mans. He had raced for La Russe in their final race in 1994 but had been well off the pace. At the Portuguese Grand Prix, Montemini qualified 20th in Q1, beating Moreno, Diniz and Bouillon who did not set a time, but Delatraz was unable to set a time as he let the engine revs drop too low going through turn 3 and stalled the car on the racing line. The marshals push started the car and all his times were deleted. Montemini improved by 1.5 seconds in Q2 but dropped to 21st as Bouillon set a time. Delatraz did set a time but had gearbox problems and was 5.3 seconds behind Moreno in 23rd, 6.6 .6 seconds behind Montemini and over 12 seconds off Coulthard's pole time. Both drivers passed a poor starting Papis off the line. Katiyama and Badawa crashed heavily on the run to turn 1 and Montemini was hit by Katiyama as he bounced back onto the track. Diniz got blocked in by Katiyama's car and Delatraz squeezed through into 19th but the race was then red flagged. The race restarted 20 minutes later. Montemini's car was fixed but he started from the pit lane with Badawa and Moreno and Katiyama did not take the restart and went to hospital which moved Delatraz up to 20th. Frentzen then stalled at the start of the second formation lap and started from the back which gave Delatraz another place. Delatraz had a very slow start and was immediately passed by Frentzen. Montemini passed Badawa on lap 2 and both drivers passed Delatraz. Moreno then passed him on lap 3, leaving him in last. Montemini then passed Diniz on lap 6, moving up to 18th. Lamy retired on lap 8 which gave both drivers a place. Montemini then passed Inoue as well, moving up to 16th. Delatraz was rapidly dropping back and was then lapped for the first time. Moreno pitted on lap 9 and rejoined behind him. Panis then retired on lap 11, giving both drivers a place. Delatraz stayed ahead of Moreno, but then retired on lap 15 with a cramp in his left arm, despite the fact that Estoril is a clockwise circuit. Montemini pitted on lap 20 and was passed by Inoue and Badawa. Inoue then pitted on lap 22 which gave him 16th. Badawa pitted on lap 36 which moved him up to 15th. He made his second stop on lap 44 and was passed by Inoue and Badawa again. Hakkinen then retired on lap 45 which gave him a place. Inoue then pitted on lap 45 which moved him back up to 15th. On lap 48 he was awarded a 10 second stop go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. He served it and was now 20 seconds behind Inoue but still comfortably ahead of Diniz and Moreno. He suffered a gearbox failure on lap 54 on what had been his strongest race of the year up to that point. Next up was the European Grand Prix, being held at the Nürburgring in Germany. Montemini sheared the left rear wheel during practice. Both qualifying sessions were done in the wet. Montemini qualified 20th in Q1, beating Inoue by a whole second. Delatraz was over 3 seconds slower in 24th. Inoue, Diniz and Moreno all improved in Q2 but not enough to beat Montemini, giving him his best result of the year. Delatraz failed to improve and was now almost 2 seconds behind Moreno in 23rd. Race day was wet as well. Papis stalled at the end of the formation lap which triggered a second one. Moreno then stalled at the start of the second formation lap which gave Delatraz a place. Inoue then suffered an electrical failure when the cars lined up and did not start the race which gave Delatraz another place. Montemini passed the Tyrrell of Gabriella Tarquini on lap 1. 
He then passed Pappis on lap 2, as well as Hakkinen and Blundell who had started on slicks. Delatraz then passed Blundell as well on lap 3. Blundell repassed him on lap 6. Pappis then repassed Montemini on lap 12. While being lapped by Schumacher, Hill and Berger on lap 14, Delatraz swiped across Hill as he was passing Berger at the Vidal chicane and almost took him out. Panis and Blundell retired on lap 15 between Montemini to 16th and Delatraz to 20th. The track then started to dry out, and Pappis and Deniz pitted on lap 15 which gave both drivers a place. Montemini then pitted for slicks on lap 16 and resumed back in 16th. Frentzen then retired on lap 18 which gave both drivers a place, but Deniz then passed Delatraz. Pappis served a penalty on lap 19 and Tarquini pitted as well for repairs which gave both drivers another place. Moreno retired from behind Delatraz on lap 23. He then pitted on lap 24 and remained in 18th. Pappis pitted from behind Montemini on lap 32. Berger retired on lap 41 which gave both drivers a place. Despite being in the pits for almost 3 minutes, Tarquini caught and passed Delatraz on lap 42. Montemini then pitted on lap 42. He left his pit box early and ran over refueler Paul Summerfield and broke his leg. Despite the delay, he still rejoined in front of Pappis. Bouillon retired on lap 45 which gave both drivers a place, but Montemini then ran out of fuel on lap 46. Delatraz pitted again on lap 51 and eventually finished in 15th, a lap down on Tarquini in 14th and 7 laps down on winner Schumacher. After the European Grand Prix, Delatraz's sponsors also stopped paying, despite the fact he was contracted for the final 5 races of the year, but Keith Wiggins had decided they didn't want to keep him anyway on performance alone, so once again they looked for a new pay driver. Japanese Formula 3000 racer Katsumi Yamamoto did a test for the team, but was not granted an FIA Super Licence, so Gasha reluctantly returned to the seat for the aptly named Pacific Grand Prix, held at the Okayama Circuit in Japan. Montemini qualified 23rd in Q1, 1.5 seconds behind Iniz, and Gasha was 6 tenths slower. Montemini improved by 2 seconds in Q2, but was now 3 tenths behind Moreno. Gasha improved by 1.3 seconds, but was 1.3 seconds slower, meaning that for the second time that year, Pacific occupied the back row of the grid. Montemini passed Moreno, Diniz and Morbidelli on the run to Turn 1. Gasho then passed Diniz at Turn 4. Diniz repassed Gasho on Lap 2, and on Lap 3, Gasho then pulled over at Turn 6 with yet another gearbox failure. Morbidelli passed Montemini on Lap 6. Bouillon and Suzuki retired on Laps 8 and 11, which gave him two places. He pitted on Lap 13 and remained ahead of Inoue, Moreno and Diniz, but he then suffered a gearbox failure as well on Lap 15. The season approached its end with the Japanese Grand Prix. Montemini qualified 21st in Q1 with Gasho 2 tenths slower in 22nd, ahead of Moreno and Blundell who did not set a time. Montemini improved by 8 tenths in Q2 to go into 20th, 6 tenths ahead of Deniz. Gasho improved by 6 tenths but ended up 2 hundredths behind Moreno, but still ahead of Blundell who once again did not set a time. Rain came on race day, so all drivers started on wet tyres. Suzuki and Moreno did not start the race which moved Montemini to 19th and Gasho to 21st. Blundell passed Gasho at Turn 1 and Diniz passed Montemini there. Vendiger rear-ended Morbidelli at Turn 2 who span and stalled the car which gave both drivers a place, but Blundell then passed Montemini as well. Vendiger ran wide and was passed by both drivers. They then both passed Diniz, leaving them 18th and 19th at the end of lap 1. Vendiger passed Gasho on lap 3 and Montemini on lap 5. Gasho then retired on lap 7 with a broken half shaft. The track started drying out and Parnis pissed on lap 8 and rejoined behind Montemini. He then passed him on lap 10. Blundell and Wendlinger pitted on lap 11 and Deniz from behind which gave Montemini two places. Katayama retired on lap 13 which gave Montemini another place, but he then pitted for slicks and rejoined in 18th, still ahead of Deniz. Inoue pitted on lap 14 and rejoined behind Montemini. Barrichello and Berger retired on lap 16 and 17 which moved Montemini up to 15th, but he then spun off into the gravel at turn 4 on lap 24. The day after the race, the team announced they had secured a deal to run Judd engines for 1996. The season reached its end with the Australian Grand Prix. Gasho wanted to step aside once again to allow the recently crowned British Formula 3 champion and test driver Oliver Gavin to race. The team had planned to claim that Gasho had broken his leg in a skiing accident, but like with Yamamoto, on the Thursday before the race Gavin was denied an FIA Super Licence, despite confronting Bernie Eccleston personally, so Gasho raced again in what would ultimately be his final race in Formula 1. Montemini qualified 20th in Q1, with Gasho 1.2 seconds slower in 22nd, ahead of Hakkinen who crashed heavily and sat out the race, and Alacy who didn't set a time. Montemini failed to improve and dropped to 22nd after Alacy set a time, and Diniz went 8 tenths faster. Gasho improved by 9 tenths of a second and was 3 tenths slower in 23rd. Badawa failed to start the race, which gave both drivers a place. Montemini had a fantastic start and passed Diniz, Moreno, Inoue and Lamy off the line. Having gotten himself up to 17th, 
He then retired at the Mistral hairpin on lap 3 with yet another gearbox failure. Gachot then started dropping away from Denis in front and span at turn 12 on lap 7 which cost him a lot of time. Wendlinger, Nui, Coulthard, Barrichello, Moraini, Alesi and Schumacher retired on laps 9, 16, 20, 21, 22, 24 and 26 respectively which moved him up to 14th. He then pitted on lap 26, 31 seconds behind Denis who pitted at the same time. Brundle, Berger and Frentzen then retired on laps 30, 35 and 40 which moved him up to 11th. He pitted for a second time on lap 51, now 37 seconds behind Diniz. Irvine, Herbert and Katsuyama then retired on laps 63, 70 and 71 respectively which gave Gasho three more places and he saw the chequered flag for only the second time that year to come home 8th, five laps down on Winner Hill. Diniz's 7th place meant 40 pushed Pacific down to 12th in the Constructors' Championship. Three weeks after the end of the season, Keith Wiggins announced the team would not be racing in Formula 1 in 1996. It had been no secret that they were extremely short of funding, and so for 1996 Wiggins went back to the far cheaper International Formula 3000. Montemini moved over to Main Rivals 40 for 1996 and then moved into GT cars. Gasho did a small amount of sports car racing and then went into business management. Delatraz went on to have a markedly more successful career in the FIA GT Championship. Lavaggi raced with Minardi in the second half of 1996 and then created his own endurance racing team. Gavin never raced in Formula 1, having driven for Pacific only once at a test at Snetterton in 1994 where the car had Formula 1 suspension on one side and Formula 3000 suspension on the other, but did a year in international touring cars before becoming F1's official safety car driver from 1997 to 1999 and then forging a long and successful career with Corvette racing in the American Le Mans series. Wiggins recruited Patrick Lemery and Cristiano De Matta for Formula 3000 in 1996, but came nowhere near the pre-F1 success and scored only a handful of points. He recruited Oliver Tichy and Marc Genet for 1997, but Genet crashed heavily at the second round and then switched over to Nordic racing, and aside from a single podium, Tichy performed no better than Lemery and De Matta had, and the team withdrew midway through the season. Wiggins also attempted to end a sports car racing by purchasing a 5-year-old BRM chassis, but after two unsuccessful campaigns, this also ended in 1998. Wiggins then joined Lola and helped them gain ground in the Champ Car World Series after their near collapse following their disastrous attempt to enter Formula 1 in 1997. In 2000, he then acquired Bettenhausen Motorsports after Tony Bettenhausen was killed in a plane crash and renamed them Herders Competition in 2001 and then HVM Racing in 2005. Former Minardi team boss Paul Stoddart bought the team in 2007 and renamed it Minardi Team USA and Wiggins became managing partner. Champ Car unified with IndyCar in 2008 and Stoddart left the team which meant Wiggins became one of only three people in history to own a Formula 1 team, a Champ Car team and an IndyCar team before withdrawing from the sport at the end of 2012. Pacific were one of the last of a series of low budget teams that entered Formula 1 in the 80s and 90s in a short lived campaign with little to no accomplishments. Unlike many of these teams, Pacific were a professional outfit that had a lot of experience in motorsport, but were completely stunted in their ability to put that experience into use by a crippling lack of money. In 1994, they qualified for only five races and didn't finish any of them. A reduced grid in 1995 gave them a guaranteed start for each race, but they finished only seven of them. The engine was good, but the gearbox was constantly braking and the drivers were frequently involved in first lap collisions and had endless problems with the fuel rig in pit stops. They initially were comfortably ahead of 40 and close to Simtech, and later in the season closed in on footwork but were overtaken by 40 to end the season as the slowest team. Their factory in the industrial estate in Thetford still exists but has been through various new owners. One of the PR02 chassis was used in the Boss GP series in the early 2000s, and the cars are now on static display at the museum at Mondello Park Circuit in Ireland. And with that, Pacific Grand Prix was no more. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at brook underscore F1 and I'll see you all next time.